So when I went over what I used to build this website, I talked about how I used Cloudflare to cache the images because this site's kind of unique with a ton of static content. So all these little tiles here are different images and then the backgrounds are images. And then also each one has a tooltip, right? So if I hover over them, each one of those is static text. Well, in my case, I'm storing it as JSON. So what I have going on is I'm using Cloudflare, which is a CDN, and it sits in front of my server. And then when I request, for example, these images or the text for this tooltip, it's going to go through Cloudflare servers and some of those requests are gonna be cached and take some load off my servers. So using something like Cloudflare is great when you have content like this that's never going to change or that changes very infrequently. So in this video, I'm gonna go over how you can do the same if you wanna set up Cloudflare. So let's start by just going over the analytics of Classic Wild WoW Builds real quick and kind of show you uh, what you could expect if you set something up like this. So, so far this is my analytics for setting this up. We've had a total of about 400,000 requests. And so about half of them have been cached through Cloudflare roughly. Um, and the other half have gone through and hit my server. And we're gonna talk more about what this means by hitting my server and kind of outline what it is a CDN does and how it works. Um, and then bandwidth wise, about half the bandwidth has been cached. So that's pretty neat. All right, so let's see how this actually works. So I first wanna just have a little dummy example here. This is what it looks like when you have no CDN set up. This is probably like regular what you're used to. So what this is, is you send a request and it just goes directly to your server and then it comes back to the user. Then when you introduce something like Cloudflare or CDN, it looks something like this. And this case is what's called a cache miss. So I send a request to uh, your server it goes to Cloudflare or the CDN first. And then what Cloudflare does is it sends a request to the server to get the data that this dude requested, stores it here, then sends it back. So then what happens is usually a cache miss happens on the very first time um, uh, uh, like a piece of data or an image is requested. And you'll notice that we've kind of introduced a um, intermediate party now. So like it went directly to the server and back, but now it goes to the CDN, to the server, to the CDN, to back to here, right? So on cache misses, it's actually slower usually. Now, what happens though is after the CDN has made the request once, usually it will cache it. And so what happens is you can get cache hits after that. So what happens is I make the request to the CDN, the CDN looks it up and it sees it has the content stored there and it just returns it here. And so usually, uh, a request from the CDN back to the user is faster than a CDN to the server. But also the other nice thing about this is you can take load off of your server and your server doesn't have to handle it. The other nice thing about Cloudflare is they have a free tier that you can use and so that's what I'm using right now. And so I can have Cloudflare kind of take off the load for other things that I may be paying for. Um, but anyway, this server back here, a good note about this is it can be anything. Um, so this could be an S3 bucket, this could be a DigitalOcean server serving images or serving JSON data or whatever you want it to serve. Uh, or in my case, it can be a Google Cloud storage uh, bucket. So I'm storing images on Google Cloud. So let's start with uh, this first one. So this is if I was not using Cloudflare. I could make a request to storage.googleapis.com um, and then this is my bucket name and I could just request this image. So this is me going directly to the server. So what do I do if I wanna set up Cloudflare so I get um, this and this kind of interaction? Well, the first thing that you're gonna need is a custom domain. So in my case, my custom domain is classicwildbuilt.com. So this is something you're gonna to have to buy. Um, get something from Namecheap or Google Cloud Domains or Google Domains. Um, go to some registrar and purchase a domain. After you do that, um, you're gonna to have to create a Google or not Google, a Cloudflare account. Um, and in your Cloudflare account, it, it'll walk you through this, I believe, but you need to point your name servers from your uh, DNS or where you bought the domain to Cloudflare. So what that allow you to do is now you can control your DNS settings um, in Cloudflare. So all that means is you can basically point um, your custom domain to like, for example, Google Cloud or DigitalOcean and that sort of thing. 
Um, and it'll, I believe it'll walk you through the steps when you first create your account. So don't worry about it. if you don't know what a name server it is, it should tell you. Um, so once you have that, you have a custom domain, you pointed your name servers to Cloudflare, you can now add DNS settings to Cloudflare. And so all you do is you basically point Cloudflare at your server. So in my case, I'm using Google uh, Cloud Storage to store my images. So what I have here is I added a, um, I actually don't remember, it was a C name maybe? Um, down here, yep. So I created a C name record. So you can go to CNAME, and I called it static is what I wanted my, this is something you get to pick. I wanted mine to be static is the subdomain, and then you point it at where your server's at. So my server was Google Cloud Bucket, so I just said c.storage.googleapis. Um, and you'll notice there's this little cloud over here. So this means that it's going to go through um, Cloudflare first. And that's it. So now Cloudflare actually will cache some things automatically that way. That's all you have to set up. Um, and so you're pretty much done after that. Um, there are some more advanced things you can do. So for example, one thing that I did is if you go to page rules, you can come over here. And um, I created a page rule for all my subdomains and every URL. And what I said here is I set the cache level to everything, um, so I needed to do this so Cloud or Cloudflare would cache JSON files as well as like JPEGs and PNGs, um, and they also set the edge cache TTL to a month. That means Cloudflare is going to cache my files for up to a month, um, and Cloudflare has like servers all over the world, so that's what the edge caches are talking about. So there's going to be servers that are closer to the end user. Um, yep, so that is that that I set up there. And then what this looks like as an end product is instead of accessing my storage.googleapis.whatever, I access static.classicwildbuilds.com, right? So notice the content's the exact same, but the difference is now that I access this URL, this static.classicwildbuilds.com goes through Cloudflare first, and then Cloudflare is going to go fetch that content uh, for me. And again, this is great for things that are static because what's going to happen is if I change what's on my server, you'll notice that sometimes the CDN doesn't get the new content and it's going to serve cache data. And so that's why you want to only really do this when you have content that doesn't change very often uh, or you have strategies in place to invalidate the data in the cache. That's the other thing you can do in Cloudflare if you need to. I think it's just under caching. Is Yep, you can purge the cache um, and kill everything inside of that if you mess something up. So there's no worry about that. Also in the overview, you can, uh, I use this a couple times, you can turn on development mode to turn off cache if you need to. But there you go. That is how you can use caching or Cloudflare to cache your static content. Uh, in conclusion, you got to get a custom domain. You got to have a server that's serving something or using Google Cloud or S3. And then you point um, your DNS over to that server.